Consider we spend roughly a third of our lives sleeping. Over a course of a normal lifetime, we will sleep over 20 years. Approximately five of those years will be spent dreaming. A lucid dream is a dream in which the dreamer knows she or he is dreaming. This heightened level of awareness makes the dream more vivid and allows the dreamer to consciously participate and influence the outcome of the dream. This includes the ability to alter the location the dream takes place. There are no boundaries to what can be experienced. An oneironaut is an explorer of the dream world. They use lucid dreams to consciously enter a world created entirely by their mind. Research on lucid dreaming has been conducted at Stanford University in Northern California. In 1987, Dr. Stephen LaBerge founded the Lucidity Institute. We set up an organization called the Lucidity Institute, a membership society of people interested in lucid dreaming uh, and other similar states of consciousness who wanted to explore together with us. Well, in the late 70s, I helped Stephen form the Lucidity Institute. And one of the main um, products that came out of this institute was a lucid dream induction device. And by this we mean a mask over their eyes with a computer chip that can monitor when they are in REM sleep. It can then signal with a flash of light. They would start seeing this flashing light in the dream. Many people then were, who weren't able to have a lucid dream would be trained to look for this flashing light and then would be able to become lucid. Um, when I shift from a normal dream into a lucid dream, the moment I become lucid, usually what happens is something in the, scene, in the dream scenery shifts or changes and, and the colors change and everything becomes really, as I said before, hi, kind of hyper real. Um, and I'm filled with an extreme sense of power and excitement. Like I just feel a huge rush of energy come through. I don't think it, it ever loses uh, the thrill. There is just this moment of brightness that sort of overtakes your feeling within a a common unlucid dream. Our research over the years has shown that lucid dreaming occurs in a particularly active state of REM or paradoxical sleep. So ordinary paradoxical sleep has got, you might say, mountains, peaks of activity, a brain activation, and valleys. So the brain is not always equally activated. Sometimes it's very much turned on and sometimes it's pretty asleep. Now, uh, people become lucid at the mountain peaks, at the top. Most of the time we don't ever recognize that we're dreaming while we're dreaming. And so we miss out on that potential to become lucid and make more of our, our dream state. So by habit, you can um, have, do reality tests during the day. And sometimes by habit that will carry over into your sleep state and you'll find yourself perhaps out of habit saying, could this be a dream? One of the best ways to do a, a reality test is to take something that is uh, predictably extremely unstable in the dream state, such as text, anything that's written. And the way to do the reality test is to read something, look away from it, look back at it, and examine, has it changed? Text rereading is an extremely reliable way to test reality. An oneironaut's psychology and belief system greatly affect all aspects of the lucid dream world. Although they can experience very real emotions such as pleasure, pain, exhilaration, and fear, they understand that no physical harm can come to them. Everyone's dream world is unique to their own mind. Oneironauts often use lucid dreams to gain greater understanding of themselves and the nature of human consciousness. When I become lucid in my dreams, one of my most common goals is to go to the sea because I'm really drawn to that huge body of water and it seems like an, another world within a world 
to explore. Since every dream is a personal construction of a possible world, if I tell you a particular dream I have or examine my own, I learn necessarily something about myself because it's the world I make when I don't have constraints from the external world. So if it's a good dream or a bad dream, it's up to me. Why is it? Uh, so naturally, therefore, dreams like any creative product will be uh, reflective of the artist, the person who dreamt them. Lucid dreaming is very helpful to find uh, uh, the patterns, the old scripts that we play over and over again. For example, one might have a reoccurring dream of a nightmare, of being chased by a monster, or chased by a dog, or chasing. When one becomes lucid, one doesn't want to just escape from the situation, so one has an opportunity to transform both the emotion and also uh, what's happening in the dream. It's a wonderful skill to practice because we see the immediate unfolding of the dream and the response because of it. So we bring that back into the waking world and we tend to respond, at least in my personal experience, I tend to respond more compassionately because of the skills I've learned through lucid dreaming. Dreaming represents rather an area of neglected experience that we could make more use of simply by coming to be conscious of the state. Say, what are the specific possibilities in the state? What else could I do? And that then leads to dreams that are, say, more fulfilling, more valuable personally than what we see otherwise, which are mainly reruns of, of our habits and our fears and our older behavior. Qualitatively, it can be very powerful fun. It can also be a very powerful spiritual experience. Oneironauts sometimes use lucid dreams to have profoundly spiritual experiences. The Tibetan Buddhists use a form of lucid dreaming called dream yoga to reach deeper levels of spirituality. Dream yoga is a very ancient discipline uh, in Tibetan Buddhism but it precedes Tibetan Buddhism. It goes back to classical India at least a thousand years ago, and it's a contemplative discipline for first gaining lucidity in dreams, apprehending the dream state as the dream state while you're dreaming, but then using that as a platform for exploring the nature of dream reality, and in so doing also exploring the dimensions of consciousness. And of course, being part of Buddhism, it really has as its motivation uh, the transformation, liberation of the mind. Seeking to become awake or aware in a dream can be a metaphor for seeking to become awake and aware in everyday life. I think the practice of lucid dreaming now is very important in uh, really lucidly uh, waking up. Waking up to our reality, waking up to our life. What are we doing? Um, in every aspect of our life. Uh, from a Buddhist perspective, we'd say that most people while dreaming are non-lucid in dreams, but most people in waking are non-lucid in waking. And there's a parallel there, and that is a similar type of breakthrough or a kind of a, an epiphany uh, to become lucid in the waking state and to really realize the profound extent to which this waking state is dreamlike. You will find as uh, you're interested in creativity, you will find out more creative flow happening, spontaneous flow, uh, because there is something with agility of the mind happening. The knowledge, uh, the, the seed of knowledge is inside of ourselves, is the matter of opening to that knowledge. When you look at the great um, poets, great prophets, when you think of where did they get their revelation? And you often end up in dreams, that they had a dream that they got their revelation from, or they, they had an incredible insight. Oneironauts are explorers of the lucid dream world. Their understanding of dreams allows them to consciously interact with an intensely vivid reality where anything is possible.
Thank you.